Good day, and thank you for watching the ACS Library. My name's Kyle, and I aim to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in under five minutes a day. Today's video continues in covering meteorology and weather theory. In today's lesson, we will be covering weather system formation, including air masses and fronts. One can better plan a flight when able to evaluate the expected effects of air masses and fronts. An air mass can be visualized as a large body of air having fairly uniform properties of temperature and moisture. Air masses are classified by these two properties. An arctic air mass is an extremely cold air mass formed over large bodies of ice and snow, typically near the poles. A polar air mass is a cool air mass forming in the upper latitudes, and a tropical air mass is a warm or hot air mass formed in the lower latitudes and at the equator. Air masses are then grouped further into two more classes based on moisture content. Continental air masses form over land, while maritime air masses form over water. When applied, the following five air masses may be identified. Maritime arctic air masses seldom, if ever, form. Here, it seems we have a maritime tropical air mass. As air masses move, they come into contact with other air masses. The zone in between these two air masses is known as the frontal zone, or front for short. Wind direction, speed, or both may change very rapidly while flying in the vicinity of a frontal zone. Be aware of possible wind shear. Temperature is among the most easily recognizable changes as flying through a front. Flying through a front will always produce a faster and more pronounced change in temperature than a flight wholly within one air mass. Pressure may increase rapidly while passing from warm to cold and decrease while passing from cold to warm. For these reasons, it is good practice to adjust the altimeter if one has knowingly crossed a frontal zone. The next topic is types of fronts. A cold front may be defined as the leading edge of an advancing cold air mass. At the surface, if a cold front encounters a warm air mass, the cold front will overtake and replace the warmer, less dense air mass, pushing it upward like in this animation. A warm front is the leaning edge of an advancing warm air mass. Because the warm air is slow to overtake and replace the colder, denser air, warm fronts typically move about half as quickly as cold fronts do. Stationary fronts are formed when neither of two approaching air masses is replacing the other. The frontal surface shows little or no movement. Occluded fronts are formed as a faster moving cold front overtakes a slower moving warm front. The cold front pushes the warm air up rapidly as it is squeezed between the cold front and the cooler air mass ahead. Clouds and precipitation can occur as a result. A squall line is a narrow band of convective activity characterized by fully developed thunderstorms. A dry line is the front or boundary between moist air flowing north from the Gulf of Mexico and the drier, denser air flowing in from the continental southwest. In the spring and early summer, the dry lines formed over Kansas, Texas, and Oklahoma generate many squall lines and tornadoes. For more information on how fronts may be depicted in various weather products, please view the video over surface analysis charts. A link is provided in this video's description. This concludes today's video over air masses and fronts. I hope that it's been helpful. As always, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, I hope you might like it or share with somebody else who may also enjoy it. If you're new to the videos, don't forget to subscribe to keep track of more. And make sure the bell to the right of the subscribe button is activated for notifications about future videos. Comments are always greatly appreciated. And again, thank you and safe flying.